so I, I guess I have to ask, is it really you? <laughs> um, why did you send Meryl Streep in your place uh, to, to accept your Oscar? My Oscar? Oh, no, the BAFTA. The BAFTA. Um, <clears throat> I didn't really, I, I couldn't be here. I don't remember why I couldn't be here. So, um, and she was going to be here, so I, I wrote a speech in case I won, and she agreed to read it. So that was sort of... It wasn't, it wasn't um, a kind of a reluctance to, to be at the event and to be... No, I was there twice. I was there two other times, so I showed up. No, I just, for some reason, couldn't make it that year. Okay. Um, so I'll just briefly explain how we're going to do this. Um, we're going to... I was going to rather unimaginatively um, uh, go through Charlie Kaufman's work in chronological order. Um, so, but just before we get into that, um, I guess I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, your background in television. Um, um, and of course, there'll, there'll, there'll be scope for asking questions when we've, when we've rattled through this. Hopefully, um, I won't be talking for, for very long. Um, uh, in television, you, you, you served kind of an apprenticeship, for want of a better word, as a television writer. Um, you worked on two episodes of Chris Elliott's Get a Life. No, I worked on a lot of episodes. I just I wrote two episodes. You wrote two episodes, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, and you worked on a couple of other shows, Ned and Stacy and the Dana Carvey show. Was that at all useful um, to you as a screenwriter? <clears throat> um, you know, it was useful to me to have a job. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, I, it was my first... It was the first time I was hired to write, and that's a big deal. You know, and um, and before that, I had a lot of difficulty showing people the stuff I'd written, and you really can't have that problem if you're working on a TV show. You have to turn in your scripts, and um, so I had to get over a lot of things. I had to, you know, I was very shy in the room. There's a writer's room in in sitcoms where you're, you know, throwing out jokes, and and um, it's a, a very competitive environment. And I was very shy, I could, barely audible for the first. Uh, several months of working there. So, um, so that was good. Um, and I was being paid to be a writer, and that was really good. And, but I don't, I mean, I don't know, useful, that, that's very useful. I don't know if it was, like, I wasn't, a, it wasn't really a training thing. It was, it was a job. Um, and was there a kind of pivotal moment when you decided, this isn't enough, I want to do something bigger and, uh, or, or had you always wanted to? I always to wanted to, and I'd always, and I, and I had a very, I had an impossible time figuring out how to get into that business that I wanted to get into. And um, I was 30 um, when I decided, okay, I'll try to work in TV. It wasn't something I really wanted to do. It was with an eye toward maybe getting in, getting people to know me, and having a chance to write screenplays. So, um, so that was the pivotal moment, deciding. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get a job on a TV show. And, um, and I was very sort of focused and pragmatic and, and tenacious in a way that I hadn't been because it was kind of like a last-ditch effort for me. I thought I was, at the time, I was answering phones in an art museum in Minneapolis. And um, I was making like, you know, $6 an hour, which was good for me. And um, <laughs> it was. It was good for me. And, um, and you know, that was it. You know, I borrowed money. I borrowed three thousand dollars, and I, I went out to L.A. and tried to get a job. And if I, if I didn't get a job, I wasn't going to be able to pay that money back. It was, you know, and then I got lucky. So. I mean, one thing I get from your films is, um, is, that is this kind of deep acquaintance, this 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 familiarity with the craft of screenwriting. And even though they're, you know, spellbindingly original. Uh, nevertheless, there, there does seem to be an underpinning of, of craft. And I guess um, I may be completely mistaken in no, that. No, I mean, it's just funny, because last night at the screening, some guy asked me, it was like the craziest question. It was like, I noticed that your screenplays don't have any structure. Um, do, you feel, <laughs> do you feel OK about your screenplays not having structure, or do you wish that your screenplays had structure? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there's someone. Maybe he's out here tonight. I hope he disagrees with you. Yes, I think I have a craft. <laughs> I guess um, 
how do you know which rules to stick to and which rules to break? <laughs> I don't think there are any rules. So, you know, I mean, there's experience and there's trying to figure out a creative way to tell a story. Those are the two things I think that I'm interested in, you know, and, and that maybe I have at, at this point, um, some of. So, but there aren't any rules. It, 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 well, let me put it a different way. I mean, yeah. which, which aspects of the craft do you think um, it's important to preserve and which parts of it are dispensable? I mean, I think that, you know, I don't, I don't really, I mean, I, I think that I have, I, I think that I, I've, I've got some maybe skill or something like that, but I don't think of it as that there are rules that I'm, that I'm either, you know, adhering to or, or, or throwing away. I mean, I, I, I really do try to think of it as this is a piece of work. I have these different tools to work with. I have the ability to create fictional people. I have the ability to... Um, describe scenery. I've got the ability to put it in a certain order. Um, I've got the ability to write lines for these people. Uh, and, th and, then, and then I figure out, then I figure out the best way to do that, in, 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 to my mind. And, and, uh, but I don't think about, you know, I, I kind of vaguely know what a three-act structure is, but it doesn't interest me. Right. It doesn't interest me. I mean, it, it's, it's, it seems like an odd thing. It seems like it's like saying that there's one way to paint a painting. No one, no one says that, but they do say that there's one way to write a screenplay. And um, so, I don't. I disagree. I guess um, the whole trajectory of the questions I've been asking you um, is trying to kind of fit you into a story template that I've got in my head, which is, you know, you start out as this bright television writer who learns the craft in the kind of trenches of the television industry and then uses that, and, and do you, do you, which is clearly rubbish, um, but do you, do, you, do, you, do you often find yourself resisting efforts to um, impose these kind of journalistic story templates on your career? I mean, I, I resist it if it's not true. You know, I, I, I mean, I get that not only on my career, I get it on, on personal things too. I mean, people... Journalists are always trying to sort of figure out an angle, you know. Um, I, I did this piece for, I did this interview for Time Magazine several years ago, and um, you know, it's one of those things, which is which is which be, which I think I'm 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 more aware of now. But there's this kind of thing that journalists do where they they befriend you and they make you think that they like you, and then you trust them, and then they they kill you, <laughs> and um, and. So anyway, so I had this conversation with this woman, and you know, at some point in the conversation, I, you know, we're talking about my past, and I, I said that I got picked on in school, you know, and so the article comes out, and it's the headline is um, "Revenge of the Nerd," and her whole angle was. You know, look at me now. I, you know, you beat me up when I was in high school, but now I'm getting back at all of you. And I was so, at the time, I mean, now I don't care, but at the time I was really offended because it isn't, has nothing to do with why I do anything. And, and it was just this thing that she, you know, wanted to say because it gave the article a form. And um, I have a difficult time doing that to people I make up you know, characters I make up, that people feel comfortable doing that to real people who live in the world is, a, is, an, is an odd thing. So, so I, I guess, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, like I said, I was, I'd been writing for a long time when I got a job in TV. I was, my first job, I was, I mean, I started trying to get that job when I was 30. By the time I got my first TV job, I was 32 years old. I wasn't a kid. Um, and, I, and I think in a lot of ways that probably ended up being helpful for me, you know, because I was not, I was not taken by it, you know, um, in the same way that I saw from people I worked with who were, who were younger than I was, you know. Um, and, but I mean, I, 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 I don't think that I was, I, don't, I think that I had my comedic ideas or my interests or, you know, the, the sort of, the, the style that I was maybe interested in working in pre-existed my TV work. 
and, and, and it was, the TV work was good. I mean, I, 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 I got the confidence, I think, from doing it. I, I, I worked with a lot of really funny people, and, you know, and that's always good. I mean, it's, it's, it's inspiring, and, and, um, and you do get an education from doing that. You hear other people's jokes, you know. Um, so, you know. Why a real person and not an actor in the John Malkovich role? <laughs> I mean, why, 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 why not have, why introduce that element of reality into a work of fiction? What was, what was going on there? I, I mean, I think it's, it's funnier, you know? It's funnier and it's, and it's more sort of um, confusing. In, in a good way, you know, it sort of, it brings, it brings, it raises the stakes, you know? If it's an actor playing it, then it's, it, it doesn't raise the same questions as, as are raised by John Malkovich playing himself in this particular version of his life, you know? And did you work with him on his dialogue so it would sound like him, or did you just give him his lines and he was like, this is me? No, I mean, I think that, you know, Spike and I, didn't, I didn't know John when I wrote this, and um, Spike and I decided before we met him that that th this is the John Malkovich that we're representing, the, the character in this movie, and that we weren't going to try to change it to, to be like the Malkovich that we would meet if there was any difference. Um, and, um, and we stuck to that. And, and, uh, and no, we didn't, we, weren't, we didn't need to change any lines. And he, he at no stage said, I just wouldn't say that. No, he didn't say that. Um, but there is there is a story that Spike tells that at one point he he did tell John that John wouldn't say this that way, um, and um, you know based on our idea of John Malkovich and John and then John changed his reading. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and why John Malkovich? Why not another real actor? Well, you know at the time when I wrote it, it was because it's as simple as that. I thought it was funny, you know, and and. Uh, since I've been asked this question a lot, I've kind of analyzed why it's funny to me, and I think it's funny because he's, it's a funny idea that people would want to be him, but it's not, but he's a serious actor. It's not a joke. Mm -hmm. It's not a jokey choice. Um, he's a real serious actor, but it's funny, and I think also there's a kind of a quality that, to, to Malkovich, that's sort of unknowable and odd. And I think you can imagine that there's somebody at, looking out through his eyes at all times. Uh, that, that isn't him. And plus, his name. It, there's no other name that works.